the Shack News Live E3 show. We're here with Zach Phelps from uh, Fortnite, Epic Games. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> uh, so, Fortnite uh, has been a long development game. We, we heard whispers of it, uh, I don't even know how long ago, before it was even publicly announced. So, uh, now it's actually getting close. <laughs> it's finally around the corner. Yes. Yeah, Jul July 25th. July yeah. 25th. Like right around the corner. Uh, so what made now the time? What have you been driving towards? Yeah, so uh, we've been in online test now for um, over 18 months. And so and as part of that online test, we've been doing a lot of work in the RPG and the progression systems and getting, uh, getting the balance of the game just right uh, to be able to then transition into never having to reset our progression again. And so, so for us, we got to a place where we're like, okay, we're confident in the RPG, we're ready to go. Now we want more feedback from more players to help us get into the next stage of development to ready the game for, for free to play in 2018. And so we said, hey, let's go ahead and open it up to paid early access on July 25th. You know, if, if you know if people want to come in, give us a lot of feedback or passionate about the game. Uh, the players that we have in the game have been going like, we want our friends in, we want our friends in, we wanted some way to get them into the game, and now we're gonna we're gonna do that. Oh, so this is all about uh, getting friends into into it, and just like uh, fighting off uh, us together. Yes, exactly. So we've got a you know it's four player co-op. Uh, we have a solid solo experience. Uh, so so everybody you know essentially we have a good balance of everything. Uh, but but don't you know don't be confused. The game's still gonna be in early access. Uh, we're still in development. Yeah, you're it's, still. You're, you're still looking for fan feedback, so uh, you're you're at a stage of completion where you feel like you can launch, you can go public. Yeah. At the same time, you're still looking for feedback. What kind of what what kind of feedback from fans are you hoping to get? What are you hoping that they, well, they chime in with? Yeah, specifically, what are you looking for? Yeah, totally. So I, I think the the most exciting things for us are when our fans come up with some cool ideas, whether it be monsters, uh, different types of fort building, different types of missions that they think would be exciting. Uh, you know, everything from you know in our online test area, people, players were like. Like, hey, we really want a different way to be able to use our heroes, uh, and so we've gotten some, we got feedback and, and suggestions about doing uh, sort of, sort of doing an expedition system, uh, and so those are the types of things that come up from our fans. Sometimes we've thought about them, them already, and that they're on the list, and then when we hear, we hear voices back from three or four different places, we're like, yeah, let's go ahead and prioritize that higher and get this done now, uh, and so those are the types of things we're excited about. So, so you want like. Uh, the the sheer mass of people saying like this could feel better in this way yeah you know? yeah and, and I'm sure the suggestion list is like you know a mile long <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> you're like, gonna, yeah like, you're gonna have, you're definitely gonna have players who like consider themselves game developers <laughs> like, like what are some of the most common requests you've seen uh, probably probably the biggest request right now that we've seen is some way for the players to uh, to be able to more easily acquire the heroes that they're excited about mm -hmm. so we have 116 heroes in the game uh, and we have uh, Man, I don't even know how many weapons, hundreds of weapons, uh, guns, traps, melee weapons, uh, schematics that you can acquire, but everything comes through our pinata loot packs. Yeah. And so, uh, and so that means that players can't directly exactly target exactly what they want. Uh, we have a lot of options in the game now that allow players to more easily select, like, hey, I want a melee weapon or I want a trap. Uh, we have some systems coming online that'll help them choose more directly. But one of the biggest pieces of feedback we've gotten is like, hey, I really want this specific hero. Um, I want her to look this way. I want to be able to put a hat on her, uh, cosmetics, yeah. you know, those types of things. And, and we know those are the types of things that are in the back of our head and that we're thinking about. We're just trying to figure out exactly when the right timing is to start releasing those things. So with that many heroes, like how many heroes do you think typically each person would would probably gravitate towards? Like that, they're, they're obviously not, it's not gonna be like collect all 116. Or well, yeah. you know, like, well, how many do they start with? First of all, <laughs> well, so so you start so uh, so right now, you know, when you come in, you, you for the forty dollar pack, you essentially get Ramirez right at the beginning, uh, and then you can and then you unlock the constructor. So you have a soldier and constructor right from the start, uh, and then from there, uh, as you open up packs, you. Players very quickly get a ninja and an outlander, uh, which are four. So those are four base classes. Constructors are best at building. Soldiers are best at shooting. Ninjas are best at melee. Jump in, jump out into combat, and then we have our outlander, which is a great exploration harvesting class. Within those four classes, then we have the, the sort of the variety of heroes and variety of powers that they can bring. Uh, the players normally what ends up happening is you end up playing with somebody and they have an awesome hero that you've never seen before and you're like man that ninja looks awesome I really want that ninja and and I've even had that experience where I'm like oh my gosh like where did you get that soldier that soldier is amazing and something that I hadn't even seen in the game 
and so and so then I'm like, okay, like I gotta go figure out like how can I try to get that guy. Yeah, because it's, it's 116 characters, and on top of that, they can all be they can all get like cosmetic pieces and different costumes. Like that, that's right. So so essentially, as the you know, they all have different appearances, and then as you unlock and you evolve them, they get like basically different hats and backpacks. And so it's it's pretty amazing. Like it's a pretty deep game, and it has a lot of flexibility. You know, the key thing for us has been actually making sure that those heroes, as you get those, they're very valuable, so you can use them in a lot of different ways in the game. And so you kind of want to have a, a, a squad of them uh, mm -hmm. to be at your disposal to be able to tackle different types of content. Are the differences between those heroes like skin deep? Is it just like appearances or do they have different stats beyond just one uh, of the four the, classes? The, the stats uh, uh, definitely change between the between the classes and, and between the different heroes and the different rarities of the heroes. Uh, the powers that they have also change and then they also have perks. So each hero has some unique perks to them uh, that, that gives them different configurations. So you can have an outlander that's really good at treasure finding or you can have an outlander that's really good at harvesting. And those are different types of outliners. So how do you approach with that many heroes and, and that much variation? Uh, there's bound to be like, oh, some soldiers are just more more popular than other soldiers. Yeah. Um, so how do you approach balance, especially given that somebody might have finally gotten a hero they like, and then the next day it's like, oh, that hero isn't as cool anymore. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's one of the that's one of the parts of transitioning to early access and getting more players and more feedback is trying to figure out like getting some of that player feedback into that. Uh, right now, the game is solely focused on PVE. So as you get those guys, each one of them is pretty unique, and they come with uh, some some really powerful pieces uh, that I think are uh, that that different types of players will gravitate to towards. Now, if you get in here that you don't like, basically you, you, you it's a card system. So you basically you can get the XP from that hero and then put it into a hero you do like. Mm -hmm. And are you when you approach balance, are you looking at popularity or are you looking at power? Is it is it uh, this one seems way more way too powerful so, or is it? I want this one that's not as popular. I kind of want to give it a boost. You, you know, know I, I think I think generally we, you know, our designers do a really good job of trying to make sure that as we go forward, we're always balancing things to the better and never, you know, never, never really more, more buffs anything. than nerfs. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to we're trying the best we can. Uh, every once in a while, we'll find a power in the game uh, that for some reason has a significant bug in it, and then we we're, we go we do go and fix it, and then that kind of brings everything back in line. Uh, but part of our online test uh, up to this point has been really uh, having players that find those things fairly quickly for us and then we fix those issues. One thing that I think is really interesting about uh, sort of modern game design, especially for games like this, is that player creativity comes into play. So you, you mentioned a bug. It could even not be a bug. It could just be like a player figuring out a way to use a power that you hadn't foreseen. Oh yeah. Uh, can you give us like a, an anecdote of like a, a, a time you've had to had to do something about that? Well, uh, yeah. So well, the the we had a soldier that has a uh, basically it's a grenadier soldier. Uh, she gets a buff that allows that that grenade to go into a cluster grenade. Mm -hmm. uh, when that cluster grenade exploded, uh, you could actually stack another hero that had a secondary power to her uh, that basically gave the the core grenades uh, a plasma charge that then would last on the ground for a certain number of seconds and so and so what players quickly figured out it's like oh we stack all these things together upgrade all these things make you throw that plasma grenade out it literally covered probably about three or four tiles worth of space so there's heroes destroying, here. just destroying everything just a, it was a amazing nuke. it was so cool <laughs> like like as soon as i saw it i was like you guys you guys are this is awesome and then i was like we gotta fix it <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good so the the core loop of the game isn't just uh it's not just a a battle game. It's not. It's no, not Overwatch or anything. No, it's uh, exploring, building, defending. Uh, the worlds are procedurally generated, uh, and so uh, you have both persistent building within your home base, where you kind of start the game, get an experience of, of sort of building and defending there, and then you move into missions uh, that uh, that you group up with either other players, so you can play solo, uh, and then you can you can go through. And so normally, most of our experiences start out with an exploration phase, where you go and you search for the objective. Once you find that objective, normally you're harvesting along the way. You put up a simple defense, a simple fort. Uh, and then you can, uh, and then you defend it against against monsters. And then the game just basically it just ramps up. There's more enemies, more crazy. Uh, it doesn't act in a consistent way. So the AI and the, the monsters get pretty smart as they come along. Um, either either super smart or super dumb. In so far as like they'll come straight at you and they'll just go through whatever walls you set up. Or they get really smart and they start looking for uh, holes in your defenses and then come around the side and it, it'll approach you from behind. And what's the, when you when you have a game structured like that? What's the end game scenario like? Like there, there's obviously not a roll credits ending, right? Because uh, it, it's a it's a persistent game. But what 
how, how crazy does it get, I guess? <laughs> yeah, it gets, uh, so at the moment we just reintroduced, uh, so uh, Twine Peak. So we have four, we have four theaters, four locations where players can play. Uh, and uh, Candy Valley used to be our top end of the game. Uh, our, in our online test, it took players probably about 300 hours to beat Candy Valley. Uh, and, and be able to get up to the top of that game. So, uh, now we introduce so longevity Peaks. isn't a problem. Yeah. Is what you're telling us. <laughs> Twine, Twine Peaks is like 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 the players right now are like they're pushing hard to get up there. Uh, they're they're super excited about it. Uh, essentially, you just get like we just have hordes of monsters. We have things. We have Smasher waves that literally just like spawn these huge blue beasts of monsters that destroy everything in their path and then they can go elemental on top of that so then you can get literally fire elemental smashers destroying your base being able to, to get through they're like they're destroying everything in their path oh, then a huge horde of husks come in behind them uh, and then players are like hmm how do we figure this out what are we going to do and you know what they do they come up with solutions they fix them they, they're able to beat the map and then they complain about how hard it was which is awesome <laughs> that's great uh, we talked about before this being a, a living experience. What's the, what's sort of the plan to to make it last? Yeah. So, so initially in our in our first phase here, we're going to be doing uh, at launch. Uh, we're introducing more of our event systems, uh, where we'll have storms that come in. They change how the uh, how the missions work. What types of husks spawn? What those husks do? With something that we call the modifier system. Uh, and then uh, those storm systems will come in and out, and then we'll continue to progress our, uh, our story, our storyline within the game. Uh, we're also gonna be introducing, uh, bringing back a mode that we'd had during our online test called Lock Party, uh, which is a, a straight up horde mode uh, with multiple waves, difficulty selection, uh, where players uh, independently build uh, uh, their own uh, bases offline, and then each player brings their own base into, into that mode, uh, where it's resourced separately from the core game. Uh, so then it's it's strictly like a competition where players can compete at like how fast can they complete uh, these block block party horde modes. Yeah, when you say that you're you're looking at PVE right now for for the for the beta test, and then yeah. you're eventually looking to PVP. Is that the sort of thing that you're looking for for PVP eventually? So you know uh, we we did some PVP tests uh, early on. Uh, right now, our focus is strictly on PVE, making sure that we make that the best experience that we can. Uh, we know that there's a bunch of players out there that are super excited about it. Uh, we know that when we split our focus, you know, we, we don't get everything, we can't get it all perfect. Uh, and so what we really want to do is provide the best PVE experience that we can and then provide some competition uh, insofar as, as being able to either do leaderboards or, or some other sort of, you know, sort of competition between groups of players. Yeah, a lot of uh, games that are you know, living experiences, long-term experiences, or esports, they, they basically uh, add new um, heroes or maps. Yeah. This, this sounds a lot more like you're looking at new ways to play. You know? Yeah, well, and that's, that's what's exciting for about early access for us, is being able to actually evolve the game, provide more content. Um, now, don't get me wrong, we're gonna be putting a ton of heroes, a ton of guns, a ton of traps. Yeah. Like, like our trap, evolving our trap system right now is like one of the, one of the most exciting things that, that we really wanna do. Um, but uh, it's, it's actually, there's gonna be a lot of work between now and next year. Yeah, I'd love to hear how the trap system evolved, because I remember a couple years ago, you had a couple like floor traps and that sort of thing, but what, 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 what new ideas have you guys come up with since then? Well, I think you know, sort of the the key thing that uh, that we put in were, were essentially our our floor and our wall pushers. So so essentially, it move husks around, and so now you can actually create uh, actually pretty complex conveyor systems that actually take husks from the front of your base and move them all the way back, push them off cliffs, uh, and, and be able to kind of have some physics related to the way that uh, players interact. Um, we also have our uh, player traversal systems where players can uh, free jump, uh, basically jump onto a trap and they'll move the player across the map very, very quickly. Um, and those are two examples of some systems that we're starting to put together to be able to create uh, more complex systems that the players essentially provide the players with a set of tools that then they can solve, solve these maps with and be able to, to create uh, amazing defenses. And the, the visual look of the game has changed. Uh, over the various iterations that we've seen it, it's, it's almost like you introduce it and then it, we don't hear that much about it and then it looks different and then we don't hear a little bit. So 
Uh, what's gone into the, the changing looks and, and what? why was this the final, like, this is what it should look like. This is yeah. this is the one we love, uh, you know? Yeah, I think, I think you know, initially we started a lot, you know, the, like on, on Fortnite, it was a long time ago where we started more grim and dark. Uh, and uh, the art team really got together and wanted to do something much more stylized, what we call playable Pixar. And uh, and really came up with this with this style, uh, and then probably about two years ago, uh, we we really wanted to bring um, the heroes forward and make them super heroic, uh, make make people that you really want to play, uh, and uh, and at the same time then provide a lot of breadth in that system, and so and so then you know Pete Ellis, our art director, and Maury Mountain, our our lead artist, they they just did amazing work to kind of pull that together to make the visuals that we. We have now. Uh, we have some amazing lighting that we put in. We doubled, we tripled down on the storms, made them super, super exciting, super crazy. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, it's like, like we've always used Fortnite as a, as a, as a test case for trying to develop UE4, right? So, so UE4 is a key portion of Epic. It's one of the things that you know, Fortnite's an example of like how to use UE4 in the, in the best way possible. And so we really try to utilize the features that they're building. Uh, that we're trying to push, push back to other developers uh, in Fortnite. So it's potentially something that could be supported throughout for years and years to come because it's kind of like a not a like kind of like a testing ground for for UE4. Yeah, absolutely. And what kind of features of UE4 are you trying to sort of show to other developers? Well, probably the latest one, you in, know, in layman's terms. Assume, yeah, assume we're yeah, idiots. Yeah. So, so, well, uh, probably, probably the latest thing that we really focused on is uh, using uh, a, a kind of a, a new uh, lighting system uh, that allows that that allows uh, for a lot more flexibility and being able to create these different lighting solutions. And so, uh, the you know. Essentially, we changed it probably maybe eight weeks ago uh, to be able to utilize that and, and, and really provide so us it's a lot still, more flexibility. So you're still very actively in development. Oh, yeah, yeah and we're, we're adjusting <laughs> that. But it gives us a lot of flexibility to be able to do stuff where you come into the world and it's like, oh, it feels super bright, uh, the sun's out, and there's a lot of really crisp shadows. And then also when the storm comes in, you just feel that rolling in, you feel that darkness coming in. So it, it ended up being amazing and really good change to the game. So how how large must your art department be to come up with 116 uh, yeah. character models? So, <laughs> Plus all the cosmetic pieces. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Uh, that is probably one of the most amazing things. Uh, we have we have two character artists on team. That uh, is insane. Uh, that, that that sort of those that are, sort of wrangle almost everything, uh, and that includes not only the those, heroes but all of our do survivors. Do those two people sleep? Do they do they not uh, sleep? No, they don't sleep. They don't sleep. And, and so. So you know, between between those two guys, essentially what they do is is they put and we have two concept art, three concept artists. Two of them are focused almost solely on heroes. Uh, we're just they're constantly cranking, and we've been cranking. Realize we've been in development for about four years or five years in development. Um, these heroes have probably been in development for about two years. They gave us some base, uh, but then we use a we use a system that allows us to replace the heads, allows us to to really target different skin types, different character sets. Uh, so the system. Basically, it's like a combination system that allows us to build heroes very quickly, and then those guys are just strict. Those guys are amazing. They're very fast to train things around. So uh, it's right around the corner. We can we can join the early access. We can start getting involved in in uh, helping you guide guide it for next yeah, year. Yeah, that, that that's right. It's uh, 725. It's going to be in uh, on the Epic Games launcher, PC, Mac, PS4, Xbox, Xbox One, uh, and then if people pre-order now, they get a four-day head start. Nice, nice. Well, thank you very much. It's been great talking to you. Yes, it was a pleasure. And we'll be back with more from on, from Shack News on the show floor.